If you're like me or my good friend Matthew O'Brien, you are a sucker when it comes to the filmic look in your video editing. There's just something so nostalgic about it, even if you grew up in an era that didn't really use all that much film. Recently, Matthew dropped an incredible video on his channel recreating the filmic look for a title all within Final Cut Pro. And so that got me thinking, is there a way to build this so you don't need to go through all of those steps every single time you want this filmic title? So in this video, we're gonna replicate Matthew O'Brien's incredible looking filmic title all within Apple Motion so that you can use it over and over again. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project and use it in your videos right now. Of course, the first thing we need to do is open up Apple Motion. Because we're building a title, we will of course want to select Final Cut Title. Then going over to the right, I'm gonna make our preset 1080p with a frame rate of 2398 and a duration of 10 seconds. From there, we can push open. When you first open up Apple Motion, you'll be greeted with the title background and type text here layers. Let's go ahead and delete those. From there, we're gonna get our text tool and just click anywhere in our viewer. After that, we can type in whatever text we want. Next, we'll go on over into our inspector, find our properties, and we're going to reset the position so it's centered. Then going into our text settings, we can go ahead and change stuff like the alignment and scale it up. Now, I didn't have the exact font that Matthew was using, so I'm using one that I found to be somewhat similar called Lovelo. This was free online, so I will try and have a link to this down below. Moving further down, let's go ahead and adjust the tracking so that the letters are just a little bit farther from each other. So this is a pretty good basis. Now the first step that Matthew did was he added a drop shadow. So let's go ahead and do that in motion. Going on over to our appearance, we can scroll down and locate the drop shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and enable that, but unfortunately we have a black background. So let's go ahead and make it so we can see what's going on. Going up to the top right, we'll find these color panel settings. And in here we can select something called the alpha overlay. So now everything that is red is going to have an alpha channel and then everything else we can see perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and just increase the distance a bit on our drop shadow and we'll bring our opacity up to a full 100. Next, I wanna color this text to have that yellow tint to it. So let's go on down to our glow and I actually really like the yellow that they have going on here. So I'm gonna click and drag that glow up to our color and now those are the exact same color. And speaking of glow, we actually wanna go ahead and enable that as well. This is going to need to be very subtle, but let's drag up the radius on our glow quite a bit, and we can actually go way too far with it just so you can get a good idea of what it's doing. But I'll back this off somewhere around 33% feels pretty good, and we can bring our opacity down. It's just gonna be very subtle, but if we zoom way in here, you can kind of see that subtle glow happening on all of our edges. Next, looking at text in the digital age, it has very sharp edges, and we definitely want to negate that quite a bit. So to do that, go ahead and select your title, then go up to filters, go down to blur, and select Gaussian blur. In here, it's already set to a value of four, and I actually find that that's quite nice for what we're going for, but if you think it's too much, you can back this off to two or three, but it just adds a nice softness to the text, really emulating that filmic feel. Now, when I was chatting with Matthew about making this video, he did mention one want he would love to have for his Final Cut Pro version, which he wasn't able to add, and that's somewhat of a roughness to the edges. Fortunately, Apple Motion does have a way to do that. Let's go ahead and select our title. We'll go up to filters, go down to stylize, and there's this really cool filter called Crystallize. Now, right now, as it is, it's way too much on our image. Let's go ahead and drag up the feathering to kind of soften out those edges and bring the size all the way down to the smallest amount, which is three. It's still way too much, so let's go ahead and find our mix value and just drag that mix down until you're just barely roughing up the edges of our image. Additionally, we can find our speed slider and I like to drag that all the way up to a full two, which is the fastest it can go. These are all very subtle things, but they go a long way in really emulating that filmic feel. Next, we also want to emulate the noise happening on our image. So selecting our title, let's go up to filters. We'll go to stylize and select add noise. Going over to the left side, let's first change the type from white noise to Gaussian noise, which is that film grain, or you could also use pink noise depending on the look you're after. I happen to like how Gaussian noise looks a little bit better. Then under monochrome, let's check that. And we can go ahead and just zoom way in just to see what we're doing to our image. And we could back off the amount 
till we get to a value we're happy with. So if I push play, we can see that noise happening. Now, one other thing Matthew mentioned is he would love to have the ability to bring in his own film grain assets, which would be a lot more accurate than using the generated film grain found inside of Apple Motion. So what we could do is instead disable the add noise parameter and we'll go up to the top middle and find add object. Go ahead and select a drop zone. Then right clicking on that drop zone, go ahead and select add image mask. From there, we can drag our subscribe text into this window. So now that drop zone is only showing up wherever our subscribe text is showing. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and locate my grain that I want to use inside of Finder. And I'll just go ahead and click and drag that grain directly onto the drop zone. Unfortunately, it's just turned everything gray. So we need to have a blend mode to fix that. Going on over to our properties, we can find the blend mode and change it from normal over to something like hard light. Now nothing changed and that's because Apple Motion by default disables whatever you use as an image mask. So if we go ahead and re-enable that, now you can see when we zoom in and push play, we have this really nice grain happening on our text and this grain is accurate to what a 16 millimeter camera would be doing on this text. Finally, the last thing we want to emulate is gate weave. Gate weave is that very subtle movement you see in film, which really makes it feel alive, but it's because the film camera is passing film through it at a really fast speed. So to achieve that, let's go ahead and select the entire group that contains the noise, contains the text and all of the effects. From there, let's go on over to the position parameter on the left hand side. We'll click this down arrow. We'll go to add parameter behavior and select wriggle. Now, if I push play, you can see it's shaking all over the place. And you'll also notice that it's only going up to the top right hand corner. It's not really shaking down to the bottom left. So let's go ahead and adjust for that. So the first value you'll see on the left side is the amount. And right now it's set to 100, which is way too much for what we want. So let's set that down to a value of 0.2. Additionally, underneath that is the apply mode and it's set to add. That is the reason why everything was kind of going up to the top right right? Because it can only add to the values inside of our position X and Y. So let's change it from add over to add and subtract. And that means it can move in both directions, giving us a lot more flexibility. Next in our frequency settings, we'll just drag that all the way up and we'll find our noisiness slider and drag that up as well. So if we push play, you can see zooming in really closely, there's a nice subtle gate weave effect happening on our text. So now that we've done all of that, scroll to the very end of your timeline and push shift M. This is gonna create this green marker and double clicking on that marker, you can change the type from standard over to project loop end. This is essentially telling motion to loop the entire project once it hits this point. This is gonna be extremely important because we have this grain asset playing at 24 frames per second, and we don't want that grain to get stretched out in duration, making it not look quite as realistic. Additionally, this would affect our gate weave and it would slow things down if we were to stretch this title out or if we were to shrink this title down, it would actually start moving a lot faster. So by looping the project at this point, it's going to fix all of those issues. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and push command S to save, and we can just call this filmic title, and we could go into our categories, and I will throw this into my tutorials category and push publish. Now that we've done that, we can jump on over into Final Cut Pro. I'm going to activate my browser, and I can locate the title that we just created under filmic title. I'll go ahead and apply this on the timeline. And if we push play, we can see our title at play here on the timeline. It looks really nice. If we zoom way in, you can see the gate weave happening. You can see all the grain. And right now my computer is set to better performance. So it's making everything look pixelated. But if we were to put this at better quality, you can clearly see the edges and just how natural that looks to the filmic look. If you wanna truly understand the reasons behind all of the choices made for this tutorial, then I strongly recommend you go check out Matthew O'Brien's tutorial, which is linked down below. If this video is helpful to you, consider pressing that like button and you may wanna check out this video where I show you how to build a perforated edge animation for your videos inside of Final Cut Pro using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.